different kind of resonance occurs when L, R and C are connected in parallel as shown here. We can analyse this circuit by using the same procedure as for the series circuit. In this case the instantaneous potential difference V is the same for all elements and is equal to the source voltage. Every one of those components are going to see the same alternating source voltage. We've got a phasor diagram drawn here. The single phasor V represents a common voltage. We know that's going to be fixed all the time so that's our reference point there if you like. That's our common voltage V. There are three separate currents, one in each branch, and the three corresponding current phases are also shown. We've got a current going through the resistor, well we know that's in phase. When the current goes through the, uh, the resistor, that's in phase with the alternating voltage. So that we just draw that on top of this line, but you know, magnitude given to the size. We know that the inductor lags the voltage by 90 degrees, so we've drawn that behind the voltage by 90 for the capacitance, we know that the capacitance current leads the voltage by 90, so we've drawn that 90 degrees in front. So the instantaneous current, lowercase i, by Kirchhoff's point rule, equals the algebraic sum of the instantaneous currents, IR, IL and IC, and is represented by the phasor, capital I. So we've got this drawn here. So what we've done is we can work out the instantaneous value. We can work out the capital I because, remember, it's that this value here now minus this value here represents this component we can think of that as being over here and then the R component so obviously the magnitude of I here is going to be R, I R squared plus XC minus I L all squared just redrawn it over here so I equals that and then we can just replace all these values so I R is V capital V over R IC is WC capital V and IL is V over WL and we've taken the V outside here. If you look at this now you can see that the the impedance, equivalent impedance here, if you if you compare this to this, you can see that this equivalent this here, this equivalent impedance is like that. So we can see that the impedance Z of this parallel combination is given by one over Z. So you can see that that is like one over z. So you can draw, you can write one over z now to get the impedance. So hence, at resonance, uh, one over z z is minimum. When you set those equal to each other, then you're going to get the square root of one over r squared, which is basically one over r. So z is equal to r at that point. So you're going to get a maximum value uh, when these two are equal. So we said here when w naught c equals WL, then equation 3 becomes I equals V over R. Yeah, you can see it becomes I, I equals V over R. This means current through the inductor and capacitors cancel. If R is large, the equivalent impedance of circuit near resonance is much larger than the individual reactants XL and XE. So what you end up with is a very high impedance here. When there's a large impedance, you get less current flow. So this is exactly the reverse of what we had with the series. Uh, resonant curve. That covers resonance.